Hey guys, this is Anime Ball Z here, and today we're going to be doing the third part of What If Symbiotes Were in Dragon Ball. Before I start this What If, I want to go over the minor plot inconsistency that was in my last part. Vegeta got healed on Stall Freeze's Dragon Balls, but the only reason that he was getting healed in canon was because he fought Zarbon in the first place, and Goku in my What If killed Zarbon before Zarbon could even fight Vegeta. The reason this inconsistency came up was because I scripted the part twice. I scripted the whole part and I didn't like how it turned out, so I re-scripted part of it. The reason Vegeta gets healed in my What If is because he had already fought Goku. Instead of him fighting Zarbon, he fights Goku, and then he fights Goku again. I'll write a pinned comment under this video to further explain the inconsistency. There's nothing much else I want to say in the intro, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Look at the way that I move, swear, disrespectful and I'm rude, okay? I had cocaine in the school. With Goku having his potential unlocked, Krillin is the next to get this done, and this time Vegeta follows Goku to their hideout. Otherwise, Vegeta would have been furious to see that they had one of the Dragon Balls at their hideout, but since that Frieza has the Dragon Balls now, it's great to see that they're the ones preventing him from achieving his goal of immortality. Since Vegeta is injured from his battle with Goku, he is healed by Dende, and this raises his power level again to 65,000. Unknown to Vegeta, his power level is actually higher than the majority of the feared Ginyu Force that are coming to take his life. Once he hears of this ability of Gurus, he also wants to get a piece of the pie. Bring me to this man, I need to increase my strength also, Vegeta demands to the group. The group are reluctant, but Goku informs them of the incoming Ginyu Force, and this makes the group more lenient on letting Vegeta go to get even stronger. So, Vegeta and Krillin get their potential unlocked by Guru, even though Vegeta does have quite a sinister mind. However, something weird plays out before Vegeta gets his potential unlocked. The same prince, you have evil in your heart but so does the other organism that resides within you. The organism is infantile, weak but growing in strength. If you are willing to save this planet from the incoming foes then I shall grant you this gift of mine. Upon arrival, Vegeta's power level skyrockets past Goku's up to 240,000. Vegeta receives a slightly lower multiplier with his power level boost than Goku since Goku possesses more potential than him. Also, Krillin's power level raises to 20,000, so he isn't weak by any means now. With this power, the Ginyu Force a toast. Then, Freeze will be my next target, Vegeta shouts, making his eyes flash a dark red. Here they come, Nail says, beside Goku and Vegeta who are stood beside each other. Okay, here we go, Goku shouts, hyping himself up for the battle that awaits them. This means more brains for me, Venom says in Goku's mind, horrifying him. What? You're only eating chocolate while with me. I'm not going to eat someone's head, Goku replies in his mind, disgusted. Five pods crash from the sky and land not too far from Guru's place. Leave here, I do not want those fighters to know of Guru's location. They will cause unnecessary trouble, Nail replies, waving his hand to try and shoo the fighters away. Okay, I should be able to take out these guys, right? With my own battle power, Goku asks Venom. That is likely. Two members are much weaker than the rest of them, but your key signature likely outclasses even theirs. I will still be here as your last lifeline, Venom explains. The reason he feels two weaker members of the Ginyu Force is because he senses Goldo and Captain Ginyu. The main issue of that is Captain Ginyu isn't actually weak, he's just suppressing his strength. Listening to Nail's command, Vegeta and Goku fly off to meet the Ginyu Force head on. Also, Krillin and Gohan fly far behind them with Dende, just to have someone that can heal the two and to see how the battle plays out. The five burly warriors, well I should say four excluding Goldo, step out of the pods to reveal themselves. Goku and Vegeta can both sense that Jace, Berta and Rakum are the strongest, while Goldo and Captain Ginyu are the weakest. That must be Captain Ginyu. How come his signature is so weak? He must know how to suppress his power too. The intelligent Vegeta surmises, landing ahead of them. Vegeta and another Saiyan, I presume. Well, both of your power levels are below 5,000. No wonder Frieza conquered your planet so easily, Ginyu says in laughter. Maybe you are hiding the little strength that you have. Show me what you're made of, Saiyan, Ginyu exclaims. Upon doing this, Vegeta shoves Goku back to steal the spotlight. As he does this though, veins of black and red goo show up across his skin. The veins are thin and slow moving, so Vegeta doesn't even notice them. Move back Goku, they're mine, Vegeta shouts back to Goku, showing off his burly physique. With a powerful roar, Vegeta's power level begins to climb. It breaks past only 40,000, but he doesn't want to show off all the power that he has. His power level stays at around 41,000, then he darts towards the cluster of warriors. To begin, he targets Goldo and tries to punch him. However, he disappears and appears behind Vegeta. Goldo then launches a full power key blast towards Vegeta's back, causing smoke to emit from the point of impact. His armor doesn't even break, and he just turns back to Goldo with a smirk. You won't be able to evade my attacks forever, weakling, Vegeta says with a frightening smile that makes his eyes go slightly red. 
Why is Vegeta covered in black veins? Are you enhancing him, Venom? Goku asks, confused. No, I feel a very weak heat signature from within him that is growing, but I do not know what it is. I did not intend to spawn another of my species. Keep watching, we might gain more information. Guldo is now scared for his life. A powerful Saiyan far stronger than himself is after him. He can stop time, but it takes a lot of energy for him to attack while also stopping time simultaneously. In the manga, he tends to use his time-stopping ability to evade attacks, not to throw them himself. Vegeta zooms right at Goldo then releases a massive energy wave with one hand. He pours his key into this one attack and Goldo is just able to evade the entire blast with his stoppage of time. Due to where the blast is aimed, it travels right towards the Ginyu Force, who are bewildered by its power. Remember, Vegeta is only using a slither of his strength, but his power level is around 41,000, which is at the level of the majority of the members of the Ginyu Force. As the energy wave travels, it destroys the ground beneath it and creates a rather lengthy trail. The Ginyu, as well as the Ginyu Force, are forced to lift themselves into flight and to dodge the attack. Since Goldo has just used his time stoppage, he won't be able to just use it back to back. Vegeta knows this, and as soon as he sees Goldo teleport, he speed lifts his head. Before he can even react, he slices off his head with his palm, taking his attention back to the main members. Don't think that you're all that just because you got rid of Goldo. I'll show you how weak you truly are, Jace exclaims in fury, zooming down towards Vegeta. Vegeta isn't the slightest bit scared as he approaches him, and all he does is smile upon seeing his approach. The two fighters clash forearms and seem to be equal. Jace is putting his all into his push, but Vegeta is barely even trying. Lifting his suppression just slightly, his power level reaches around 60,000 and this shocks the other members of the Ginyu Force. How could his power level reach such a high level? He's stronger than everyone but Captain. No, that can't be true, Berta thinks to himself, while looking at the values his scouter is displaying. Jace and Vegeta then go at it, and Vegeta clearly has the advantage. He can veer around all of Jace's strikes, and his power just seems insurmountable to Jace. Jace tries to land a punch on Vegeta, but he ducks under and snaps out his fist into his stomach. His armor cracks and shatters from this one punch alone. Jace is sent flying back, and Vegeta can't stop smiling as he feels the power coursing through his veins. Let me face him, Ginyu states. Why? I can handle him with Raccoon, Berta claims, unable to accept Vegeta's evident superiority. No, you two do not have the power on his level. Jace is on par with you guys and he was overpowered the entire fight. You will just get yourselves injured for no reason at all, Ginyu claims, slowly descending in flight. So, the Captain Ginyu has come to take out a lowly Saiyan. I will destroy you just like I did to Jace and reduce your entire team to ashes, Vegeta shouts with a slight deep undertone to his new voice. However, the alteration to his voice is too minor for everyone to notice, everyone except Goku. He does have a symbiote, doesn't he, Venom? Goku asks, almost certain now. Yes, it isn't me though. It has to be some form of accidental spawning. Or he has formed a totally new form of myself from merely a fragment of me. It is still hard to tell. At this point, the black veins on Vegeta start to move, getting more and more powerful by the second. Ah, Vegeta, your arrogance has always been the factor that has limited you. You were just unable to know your place, Ginyu shouts, clenching his fists for battle. Do you think this is the end of my power? I will show you that I am limitless, Vegeta shouts, beginning his power up. His power level climbs and climbs until it stagnates at 90,000. However, his power level starts to climb past that. Oh, even higher, 95,000. Brilliant, Ginyu thinks, almost completely unfazed. Vegeta flies right towards Ginyu, and since he still has his power suppressed, he is taken aback by the impactful punch that lands on his jaw. It leaves a rather sizable bruise on his face, but it only really makes him angry. Releasing his dark purple energy, Ginyu reveals his true strength, and Vegeta can even feel how strong he has become. However, he isn't scared, but is just looking forward to the fight even more. Vegeta tries to land a fair share of different attacks, but Ginyu is just way faster than him. He extends out with a sidekick, but Ginyu does a somersault right over the kick, shooting down several key blasts after doing this. The blasts slam right into Vegeta, and after taking a few, he lifts his arms to try and take the majority of the impact. Each key blast releases a large cloud of smoke, while also making Vegeta slide back. Through the smoke, Ginyu lands a finisher blow, which is a flying punch to the chest. Vegeta is propelled backwards and starts rolling across the floor uncontrollably. From the looks of things, Ginyu has won. Goku gets ready to step in, but there is audible laughter coming from Vegeta. Laughter? Why is he laughing? Ginyu and Goku both think this. His injuries then start to fade right off his skin, and Goku can sense his key signature rising as this happens. The symbiote, he is receiving a Zenkai, Goku says. You really thought that was everything I had? You are sadly mistaken. 150,000? How is this possible? 
Vegeta explodes in a darker silver aura with larger streaks of black and dark red this time. His aura is also larger and so is his range. His muscles seem to have gotten slightly bigger too. You're finished. So that will conclude the third part of What If Symbiotes were in Dragon Ball. If you guys find any plot inconsistencies in my What If, please make sure to say so in the comments so I can make this series run more smoothly. Also, it isn't exactly fun to run a What If on a broken plot. Please tell me something you liked about the video or something that I should improve on for the next part. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.